Hi, I'm Neil Grover. Today we're going to talk about gongs and the proper way to play or strike the gong. But before we get into the lesson, I want to talk for a minute about the terminology. Gong is often misunderstood. The term gong is a broad term, which means any type of pitched or unpitched flat or disc with a boss. Uh, in this particular case, we're going to demonstrate how to play the tam-tam. A tam-tam is simply a type of gong that has indefinite pitch. The orchestral gong, or tam-tam, is an instrument that usually has a very large diameter to get a very low, full sound. Because of that, it speaks very late. So the first thing to do before you even strike the gong is warm it up. And by warming it up, we just get the vibrations going in the metal. The best way to warm up a gong is very quietly so it's not heard. And I like to do it along the edge just to get the vibrations going in the gong very gently, very softly. Some people misunderstand warming up the gong to mean a rubbing motion, which it is not. It is simply a very soft, light tapping to get the vibrations going so that when we actually strike the gong, it speaks quickly. Now we talked about warming up the gong. The next step is a preparation for the stroke. So we first must identify where we're going to strike the gong. And for a large gong or tam-tam like this, you don't want to strike it in the middle. You want to strike it just off center. And I like to use the round center dark part as a guide and hit it right on the edge of that. And that will give you the best maximum sound. So as we talked about warming up the gong lightly, the next step would be to line up and a preparation. Now the preparation is dependent upon how loudly you're going to play. You don't need to really smack the gong to get a good full sound. But you do want to be at least 6 to 12 inches away and get a good motion with your wrist and arm to strike it right at the spot we talked about, right off center. So here we'll warm it up, prep, and stroke. The orchestral gong has a very, very long decay. Consequently, we want to control that decay and muffle. So there's two ways to muffle. Actually, there's many ways to muffle, but the two easiest is to muffle on the front face of the gong, and I like to use my left hand and the mallet. So if I warm the gong up, stroke, and then I can muffle it that way and control it. Now I can control it by muffling it quickly or in a tapered uh, diminuendo. I like to use the front muffle for a tapered long diminuendo. I can control it easily that way. Another very effective way to muffle a gong is to use your hand on the back surface and your knee and the mallet on the front surface. This is particularly effective when playing shorter notes. Once again, hand on the back, mallet, knee on the front. There are many ways and methods you can use to play a gong. The important thing is to be relaxed, have a good stroke, and control the sound. I hope you found this little lesson informative, and I look forward to seeing you sometime soon.